Hi, I'm Dr. Lim, consultant pediatrician at Thomson Hospital, Kota Damansara in Malaysia. For the past two weeks, we have received reports that between 18 to 30 percent of COVID positive cases on a given day were those who had been fully vaccinated. What conclusion can we draw from this? Well, one thing's for sure. The COVID vaccine is not able to completely prevent a person from being infected. Therefore, it is now a foregone conclusion that herd immunity is no longer possible, even if 90% gets vaccinated. The virus will become endemic and we will have to continue living with the virus for some time. Somewhere along the line, each of us would eventually have to encounter the coronavirus. We can no longer escape. The virus is unstoppable. It would ultimately be a fight to the death between our immune system and our unseen enemy. Therefore, our immune system would have to be in tip-top condition to fight this virus. Okay, many people talk about boosting our immune system. But our immune system is a complex thing. Having a deficient immune system and we come down with infections or even cancers. Boosting it too much and we'll come down with allergic conditions or autoimmune diseases. In fact, COVID causes damage not so much from the virus itself, but more from the exaggerated or hyper response of our immune system to the virus. So therefore, the key thing here is not to boost, but to optimize, optimize our immune system. There are several ways we can do so, but for today, I would like to highlight the role of exercise in enhancing our immune system. In particular, looking at its effects in fighting COVID infections. There are three recent landmark studies that I would like to share with everybody. Okay, the first is a study done in South Korea, published in the BMJ, the British Medical Journal, in July 2021. The conclusion of this study is that those who did at least 75 minutes per week of vigorous aerobic activity, such as running and high-intensity interval training, or 150 minutes per week of moderate aerobic activity, like brisk walking or cycling, plus doing muscle strengthening exercises such as using weights or body weight resistance training for at least twice a week, would reduce risk of catching COVID by 15%, risk of severe COVID by almost 60%, and death from COVID by 80%. That's a lot. It has almost the same reduction as taking a COVID vaccine. Those who did only muscle strengthening activities did not show any significant reduction on risk of COVID, while those who did only aerobic activities showed a modest reduction in severe COVID by 16% and death from COVID by 28%, which did not reach statistical significance. Okay, the second study was done in the United States, also published in the BMJ in April 2021. Okay, the conclusions from this study showed that those who exercised for 150 minutes or more per week reduced risk of hospitalization, admission to ICU, and death from COVID by 60%, compared to those who were inactive who exercised for 10 minutes or less per week. Even those who did some physical activity, meaning those who exercised for between 11 and 149 minutes per week, reduce risk of hospitalization and death by 20%. Okay, now we move on to the third study conducted in the UK, published in the International Journal of Obesity in February 2021. This study looks into the effects of exercise intensity on COVID outcomes. They compared the slow walkers, those who walk at a speed of less than 5 km per hour, to the brisk walkers, those who walk at a speed of 6.5 km per hour or more. 
actually at this speed is almost like jogging. The brisk walkers compared to the slow walkers had reduced risk of severe COVID by 60% and death from COVID by almost 75%. Okay, so based on these three papers, what take home messages can we start putting into practice to equip our immune system to fight COVID? Okay, the first message is to fight COVID, we need to exercise at a prescribed intensity to have a significant effect on our immune system. The recommended intensity is at least moderate, meaning we must at least be panting a little and feeling a little breathless while performing the exercise. If you are just walking the dog or strolling in the park while chit-chatting away, or you are still able to watch your YouTube on your smartphone screen while performing the exercise, the intensity is probably inadequate. The second message is we need to do aerobic exercise for a prescribed duration of at least 150 minutes per week for moderate intensity and 75 minutes per week for vigorous intensity exercise to see the greatest benefits. Doing exercises shorter than this prescribed duration still would be beneficial, but the benefits are modest at best. The third message is aerobic activities need to be combined with muscle strengthening exercises of at least twice a week to see the greatest benefits. Simple bodyweight exercises like squats, lunges, burpees and push-ups can be done at varying levels of difficulty in the comforts of our home to achieve this purpose. Okay, one exercise I would recommend would be high intensity interval training or HIIT which incorporates both aerobic and muscle strengthening. We just need to do 15 minutes, 5 times a week and we are done. There are tons of HIIT workouts on YouTube and you can choose one suited to your fitness level. Take it easy and go slow if you are just starting out. For children, they also need to be doing some physical activity too. Do not let them be cooped up in the home playing video games or watching TV. Get them up and about daily by doing their fair share of house chores. Also get them out of the home to at least play and run about in the park. It has all the while been known that exercise equips our immune system to fight infection. The papers I've highlighted shown exercise also works the same against COVID. For those who are already exercising regularly, do keep it up. For those who are not, well, this is a good time to start. As the majority of people have taken the COVID vaccine, lockdown should be eased gradually. Since the virus won't disappear anytime soon, we also cannot lock down forever. The indicator whether to enhance lockdowns would then depend not on the number of cases, but on whether our health system is able to cope with the emissions for COVID. A COVID vaccine booster may also be required in the near future. But one thing's for sure, the army of coronavirus is now appearing down the horizon. Can you see them? Whether we like it or not, they are surely coming. And they are constantly mutating, adapting. And the virus will not stop until each and every one of us has fought with it in an epic battle to the death. We must start equipping our army of immune cells to be ready against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Okay, we have taken the vaccinations. Now, exercise is another weapon in our armamentarium. Exercise cannot just enhance our immune system overnight. It takes diligent, regular exercises over at least several months to start seeing a difference. So get ourselves ready for the battle at hand. The coronavirus has disrupted our lives and livelihoods. And if it is now coming for our lives, we must be ready. We would say, Bring it on!